Good morning. Here we are in my shop again this morning. Yesterday I put out a video where I was, um, where I made a SketchUp uh, model of a card I'm going to put together for my AC, my air conditioner, and my laser chiller. And I'd asked if anybody wanted to actually see me um, show how you would take that SketchUp drawing and put it into one of the Vectric software programs, how you would export it from SketchUp into that software if you wanted to cut it on your CNC. And I got a couple responses that said they'd like to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and try and make a short little uh, tutorial video. It won't be detailed or complex on how you would actually manipulate vectors in uh, VCarb. It's going to focus on taking a SketchUp model and putting it in, and specifically this SketchUp model. I hope this helps some people in their efforts because I've heard uh, through the various forums several people struggle when they try to import SketchUp in because it says you need a 2019 model or older, and you do. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go into the information I've seen on the forums about importing a SketchUp drawing into Vectric and some of the challenges that people have experienced. They typically get a message that goes something like this. Let me show you the example. So I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to go ahead and make it like a 5x5 Baltic birch sheet. And then now I've got my file here. I didn't go through all the details but I made this a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood. And I want to import my SketchUp components into this so that I can cut them. So I come over here and I can either go File, Import Vectors, that's one way, or I can click on this envelope. I come down here and I look for my model in my thing, in my uh, list of models, and I pick this one. This is the one that I did yesterday in the video yesterday I open it and look at what I get I get a, a uh, error message it says failed to open SketchUp file the file was written by a later unsupported version of SketchUp please save the file from SketchUp in version 2019 or earlier format and I hit OK so people get frustrated and say well, I thought you could do it well you can't so let me show you how we go about doing that so I've opened up my SketchUp file this is the file that you would have saw in the video yesterday. If I move around in it uh, to the different places, you'll be able to see that there was the stand I had right there. And then I separated them into components to use. And then I separated them into different uh, scenes so that I could cut my board if I was doing it without a CNC. And right after I finished uh, showing how I made separated these components from the component stand in a quick brief rehash remember I just copied this and moved it out of the way and then I tore this apart and from tearing it apart I turned it into these uh, different pieces these are the components that I will need to cut and then after I uh, had all these laid out just to make it easier for me to see I then laid them out mechanically on a boards or two boards, two sheets of plywood so that I could use those as cutting uh, my materials on a uh, table saw or track saw or however you want to do it. At the one point in the video I said at this point I would go ahead and export these. I would save these and export these to uh, to Vectric VCarve Pro if I wanted to cut these on my CNC. My CNC is only a 2x3. I don't want to mess with tiling or other things or break down the sheets of plywood. If I'm going to do that, I might as well just cut them all on my table saw. But if I had a 4x8 CNC uh, that could take a full sheet of plywood, I would likely just cut these on my CNC. Uh, so we're at that point right now. One difference you'll see is in the video when I said that these were not colored. I colored them later in the video to make it easier to identify the components. So there's a couple steps you need to do to make this most convenient. Now you don't have to do these steps, but otherwise you get a mess when you try to import them into VCarve. To be straightforward, you would not have to separate all of the frame into those components uh, to import it into VCarve, but it makes it a lot cleaner, so I would always do that. Just keep that in the back of your mind. 
So the first thing we need to do is I'm going to come back over here is we have to make it easy for us to separate these components in VCAR Pro. We have to be thinking ahead. So the first thing we want to do is we need to tag each of these components in a way that means something to us. Now you could just tag all of these as cart components if you wanted to, and that would be one way of doing it. And to do that, the first thing you would do is you'd come down here to uh, tags, and I don't know how well you can see it. Hopefully, I don't need the material, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shrink the materials. Um, so I'm gonna come down to tags right here where it says tags. I'm gonna hit add a new tag, and I would say cart components. Now, if I wanted to actually separate out these things into lower frame or lower tray, bottom tray, side frames, I could do that. It's whatever you prefer. But since uh, there's no labels coming over with them or anything else, it's probably easier just to say cart components. I'm going to select all of these components without selecting the dimensions element because I don't want those to be called a cart component. Okay, you can see I've selected all of the components. I'm going to come up here in the entity info. There's 18 components. I'm going to select the tag cart components. And so now each of these are named cart components. Now that we renamed all the components, or I should say tag them as cart components, it's time to go ahead and save this file in a version that the Vectric VCAR Pro software can read. So that means we need to save it as a 2019 file or older. So the way we do that is we come over, hit File, Save As, and then we're going to go to AC Cart. That's a good place. I'm going to put down here so I know when I'm selecting it, it's the 2019 AC frame. And then I'm going to hit save, but not until I come up here and I have to hit set SketchUp 2019. So save as type SketchUp 2019 or 2018, whatever you want, you can pick. That's the important part. Hit save. So now I've saved the SketchUp file as a 2019 version. I can close SketchUp out. I'll just uh, minimize it for now. I come in and I hit to Vectric. I've already set this up from before, remember? I hit open or import vectors. And if I hit this one, I'm going to show you the difference. If I hit this one, it's going to tell me, oh, you can't do that. But if I hit the one that actually said it was a 2019, open that and you see it opens up to this screen. And this is why I suggested we actually uh, tag the components. So let's go through this real quickly. Auto orientate. That looks fine with me. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't have dados or anything else, so I'm not going to orientate by material face with selected material as top face. I've already put that in that component sheet. I'm not worried about it. I don't need all three views. I don't have any circles. If I did, I would uh, have that and reflect arc, refit arcs to boundaries. If I had that, I would fit that. In those cases, I don't even need either one of those, but depending on my project, I might. And I would group imported projects, create a group for each component in SketchUp, and uh, I can either do groups or not groups. I'll go ahead and leave that. This won't hurt any keep components starting with two underscores together. Keep all children quotes starting. I don't I don't need either one of those. Those are the default, so I'll just leave them. And I don't need to replace the outer boundary. The next part is normally or many times you'll open this up and it'll say import all visible data. Well, I don't want that because that means that it's going to take everything from the SketchUp file, all the pieces, and put them together in, in, in uh, different layers. And so SketchUp calls the, um, Vectric calls these layers because that's what they used to be called in SketchUp. They're now called tags. They used to be called layers. They're now called tags. I don't want to import everything from SketchUp, so I 
That's why I went through and named what I did. I wanted to name them so that I only get what I wanted. So now I'm going to Im only import visible data on selected layers, and I'm going to unclick the layer that would have all of the other stuff besides those components I renamed. So now we have cart components, 18 parts. I hit OK. And as you see, they come in to this uh, in a very nice way. Um, You'll also see that they won't all fit on my 5x5 five five sheet of plywood. So I'm going to have to add some additional material. This can be done in a real quick way by using the nesting tool in VCAR Pro. So, so now I have all the components in uh, VCAR Pro from SketchUp that I need to cut. The next thing to do is to fit these all on available plywood. Uh, let's stay with the 5x5 five five concept. And I'm going to go to the nesting tool. I'm going to use a quarter inch uh, compression bit. I'm going to have the clearance between the bit and the piece, the next piece of material. That's what this C is. If I wanted to run them right down between them, I could do that. There is a lot of different thoughts about that. So I will just go ahead and I'm going to have zero clearance and that will give me my most efficient. And I'm only doing that because we've got such a... Uh, nice straight lines in here and I'm going to either use a vacuum table some tape or something to hold this down I'm not going to put a bunch of tabs in there in reality on most CNC's you'd have to put some tabs in there so you'd want to figure out uh, how much clearance you want for this little demo I'm not going to do that I'm going to have a one inch gap on the border and uh, well, let me say I can rotate parts up to 45 degrees if I want to. I'm going to keep my nesting in the bottom left corner. I only need uh, one copy of each of these. Uh, if I wanted to go through and make multiple copies of, of certain ones, I could have done that. And that's for another video. If you want something on that, say something in the comment sheet. Uh, this video is not on the nesting function. So I now hit preview. And you can see that what it's done is it's taken all of my original parts from the first sheet that got brought in and it's put it on two additional sheets. Sheet two and sheet three. Those are the two sheets I would need to set up tool pass on for cutting this plywood. I'm not going to go into setting up the tool pass in this video. Uh, so let me hit reset preview. So that was with the rotate parts to find the best. So as you can see, two new sheets were added, and this is how it looks if it's rotated. And uh, let's take a look at what would happen if you didn't rotate it. So I'm going to, remember this is just preview. I'm going to deselect that, and I'm going to reset preview. And I'm going to hit preview this way. So you can't always rely on the Vectric software to give you the least amount of material. It usually does a good job, but uh, the nesting process um, might do things like rotate some of these parts like it did last time and you can actually see you're cutting less parts over here so you're using less of your plywood material if you don't rotate so uh, play around with it a little bit and in some cases it may even be beneficial after it does its nesting to go back and manually um, relocate parts but I'm not going to get into that again I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the nesting but once you have it nested and you think you've got it, I say I like that, I'll hit OK. And now what you can see is I have these materials here which I can cut and I'll keep this sheet. So if I was going to do this, I would go to Sheets for me uh, just because of organization skills. I'd rename this sheet as Original Components. And then uh, I would go cut sheet one, and I would do cut sheet two. And now I have all my sheets to set up for actually um, setting up the tool pass. But I, again, I'm not going to go into the setup of the tool pass in this video. So that's how you would do it. Now one other option could have been remove the original parts and then you wouldn't have this sheet left. Uh, this sheet. 
So recall when I did the nesting, uh, one of the options was to remove original parts. And I did, I unchecked that and that allows me to keep these original parts here. If I would have put remove original parts, I would have ended up with only two sheets. Hopefully that makes sense. It would have deleted all of these and just put them on the sheets necessary for nesting. So that's all there is to it. You saw the key is you've got to take the SketchUp. While you're in SketchUp, you have to save it as a 2019 file or you'll get that message that gets confusing to people. And then once you get it in here, you figure out how you want to manipulate it. Uh, I can use nesting and then I can set up my tool pass. That's what I have for you today in this tutorial. I hope some of you find it helpful. If so, then you know what will be helpful to me. Give me a thumbs up and like this and share it. And then give me comments on things you liked or things you would like to see in the future. In summary, let's go through what we covered. The first thing is if you want to import a SketchUp model into Vectric to do the cutting for you, you have to do a couple things. You have to set up the SketchUp model to make it easy to do. And the easiest way I have found is proper tagging of components. It used to be called layers. Proper tagging of components in SketchUp right up front on what you're going to want to cut in the CNC software. There are various ways to do that. I demonstrated one. The next thing is, once you've got the components properly tagged, you need to save that file as a 2019 version or earlier. If you do not save that file as a 2019 version or earlier, Vectric, VCar Pro, or Aspire won't bring it in. It will not recognize it and you'll get the error message or the message that many people have been talking uh, about on various forums I've uh, been monitoring. So those are the two things. Uh, practice your tagging, uh, save as a 2019 or earlier file. I hope this information is useful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section and I'll see what I can do to address them. It's been a pleasure sharing this information and I hope the information I am sharing in these videos is working out well for you. Have a wonderful life, have a great day, and we'll talk to you again some other time in the future via this uh, medium. Have a great day.